A subscriber asks, does the size and type of a spacer make a difference in AFR when tuning a carburetor? I don't know. It's a great question. Let's find out. Questions like these are really fun. So if you've got questions about how things operate and what is the result if you do this or try that, please leave them in the comments. Please comment, you know, those types of questions on the videos. I love them. Uh, it's quite honestly the reason why we did the Can You Turn a 650 into a 500 video. That was really cool. We did learn a lot, but uh, certainly on spacers, uh, I think I know what the answer is going to be with this. And to be very honest with you, I think think the results are going to be pretty minimal when we're looking at AFR. Now, that doesn't mean that these aren't completely different once you completely tune through them. For example, this spacer here is going to tune a little bit different uh, and may require a little bit more than a big two-inch spacer because you're changing uh, the way the fuel and air flows from the carburetor to the intake manifold. Certainly the type of four-hole spacer is going to behave differently than an open plenum spacer. What we cannot do is I can't tell you, yeah, here's a seat of the pants, uh, you know, result. Wow, it was great. You have no way of looking at that with me. And I like looking at things that give a definitive result where we can measure it and see what the difference is. We've tried to do that with every video I do. So I think that's what we're going to do is we're going to look at AFR. Obviously, we'll look at engine vacuum and uh, we'll try to watch the tack and speedo so we can give it the same test every single time. So we're going to drive down the same road. Uh, we'll do the same mile per hour. And I'm going to try to test it at a couple of different uh, uh, speeds. Maybe we'll look at it at 40 miles per hour. Uh, try to look at it 50 and maybe 60 miles per hour. So we're going to try a bunch of different things to see it. So here are the spacers that we're using. Obviously, uh, wood laminate, uh, which is my favorite uh, type of spacer for heat blocking. Uh, and we'll do the four hole first. It's a half inch spacer. These are really good on dual plane intakes. Obviously, the wood laminate, I believe, another test that I don't know that I can uh, give good results on, but it fe always feels like that the wood laminate is better blocking heat than a plastic, so natural uh, type stuff is usually better. Right now, currently on the GMC truck is a one inch spacer, so we're going to see uh, how well that does. Um, and so that will be the baseline. I thought about doing it without a, a spacer on there, but we're not testing without and with we're just looking at uh, what AFR is. So it's tuned, so we'll do the baseline and then we'll just see what the other three give as results. The other that we'll do is a two inch uh, phenolic spacer. Again, I, I don't, I use these fairly frequently when one, there's a big heating problem, when you got lots of room under hood because obviously, you know, the thickness between the two inch spacer and uh, you know, a, a one inch spacer is pretty significant, especially when you look at them all three side by side by side, half one and two. So yeah, it, it, it does, you are limited on that for space, but I wanna see what the AFR looks like. The one that really intrigues me, and I did a video on this, uh, who man, it's been a while ago. Uh, Polymer Racing Products sent me multiple uh, of their spacers that are dimpled. If you look on the inside here, uh, they're dimpled. Uh, the uh, owner or the manufacturer of this product uh, has got lots of dyno sheets on their website. I'll leave a link to their website down below so you can take a look at it. Uh, Canadian company, but I am assuming they uh, 3D print these things. They are dimpled, and if it works off the principle that uh, airflow uh, and that boundary layer that occurs in there, uh, pulls the air away from that and allows it to go through quicker uh, is what I'm assuming that the uh, theory is behind it. It should work out fairly well. So we're going to use this one inch spacer. Also too, with this polymer racing product spacer, we are going to the dyno on this pretty soon. What I will end up doing on that is we'll go back to back. Uh, we'll do half inch open plenum spacer, and then we will do their, uh, uh, or excuse me, one inch and then versus their one inch uh, four hole spacer. So really looking forward to that. But this one's going to be the one where I think if we see the most dramatic change between the three, um, between the, the one inch open uh, and the four hole, we may see an AFR change there. I don't know. It's really going to be very minute, I think. And that's going to be the problem with this is if we were measuring 
EGT, if we had O2s in every uh, in every port uh, on the exhaust side where we could look at every single uh, way it comes out of there, we could kind of take a look at that. That sophistication I don't have, uh, and I'm not going to go spend uh, the money and time to put uh, an engine on an engine dyno and, and really look at it that way. So it's going to be a little uh, difficult, I think, but I think what we will do is I think we will see something. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but let's find out. So now that we got that sorted out, we know how we're going to test it. We have a baseline that we're going to work with. Uh, let's get out to the truck and uh, we'll do a baseline video with that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll start uh, making changes and probably do it in that order. Baseline, that, and that way I can use the same studs on the on there. And then we'll put the big spacer on and try it that way. So anyway, let's get out to the GMC and see what we can figure out. Okay, so uh, we'll start the baseline runs here. Uh, I've got uh, a little checklist. I probably won't fill that out though until we get... Uh, um, I can go back and look at the video and kind of get some averages, but uh, we'll do it 40, 50, and 60 miles per hour with the one inch spacer that's on there now. And uh, we'll get some average AFRs and go from there. So this is uh, test run number one. I'm going to try my best to keep these as close to uh, our target mile per hour. Light load, 50 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour, light load. Let's get the one inch spacer off, put the half inch four hole spacer on next. Here we go, half inch four hole spacer and no other adjustments made in the carburetor, no tuning adjustments, nothing. We're just going to run it as is and see what happens. Really good cruise AFR there. Okay, 50 miles per hour. Get that half inch spacer off there and let's test out the one I've been waiting on is this one from Polymer Racing Products and see how this dimpled four hole spacer does. Here we go with the Polymer Racing Products one inch four hole dimpled spacer and let's see how she does. Forty miles per hour. Fifty miles per hour. Last but not least is the two inch spacer. Now I'm going to have to do a little bit of work with this one. Uh, the studs are going to have to change because uh, obviously we're in another inch taller. And I'm probably going to have to adjust the TV cable. Um, I know uh, the half inch spacer was really soft on the shift, so it just it wasn't enough. And I think uh, the two inch spacer is going to make it too tight and uh, it'll take forever uh, between shifts. So. Let me do that. Uh, I think I got enough cable left in there to uh, uh, smooth that out just a little bit. So let me do it all that and we'll uh, get this thing on the road. You can kind of see how aggressive that uh, TV cable <laughs> geometry is, uh, angle, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that uh, we covered that in the 700R video on the TV cable and how to adjust it and uh, yeah that's the reason why that this thing would shift really hard so what I need to do is I need to uh, try to take some of the angle out of that and uh, the right way to do that would be to elevate up that TV cable and the throttle cable so it uh, 
has the right, uh, you know, straightforward pull on it. But uh, yeah, right now that thing's going to be pretty aggressive on the uh, on the uh, upshift. So let me uh, tweak that a little bit, and we'll get on the road. All right, two inch spacer. Here we go. Well, test is all completed and uh, quite honestly, <laughs> learned a lot from that. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be as, uh, you know, the results were going to be that uh, specific, but they certainly were. So uh, you can see, and I'll, I'll leave a image up on the screen so you can kind of take a look at it, but uh, we'll talk about all the numbers. But uh, just want to talk about how I conducted the test first. So each one of these where I measured at 40 miles per hour, um, on whatever spacer it was, 50 and 60 miles per hour. I did it for a one minute timed event, meaning I wanted to give it plenty of time to work through any or abnormalities, any weird stuff with it and uh, get the best result possible. So I felt one minute was long enough to kind of get a good average of what was going on with an AFR. Um, I can tell you that um, my AFR doesn't data log, so capturing it on video was actually really helpful because I was able to go screen by screen and uh, advance it just one frame at a time and take a look at it. So I could tell you, um, because I counted uh, or recorded so many uh, values, it's ridiculous, about 80 values at every 10 seconds that the AFR uh, read on the screen as it changed and on average, and then it's about 480, 500 for a full minute of changes to the AFR. So every time the O2 sensor recorded it, spit it back out, uh, I recorded that change. So it was kind of helpful to see it. Uh, I learned quite a bit from that that I, I, I wasn't I mean, I've, I've data logged before, but on a carbureted application, it's much different than on an EFI where you just download it, you can look at those tables, and it's very easy to kind of see what your average AFR is. So now let me put that up on the screen so you can kind of see it. So what did we learn from that? Now, again, I thought it was going to be pretty, not very dramatic, but the one-inch spacer uh, was a baseline. It was, it's what the truck was tuned on. So I expected it to be very good, and it was uh, 40 miles per hour, uh, right at 14.03, uh, 50 at 13.8, that's not bad. Uh, 60 at 13.6, I could tune that um, if I wanted to um, at that mile per hour, it wouldn't be that difficult actually. Um, just have to determine if the, uh, uh, I, I'm sure that the secondary fueling was kicked in by then, so it's probably the reason why those were so rich at 60 miles per hour, enough airspeed going into there. Um, was there any surprises? Yeah, I expected that half inch four hole spacer to do much better. Um, it was just rich the entire way. Um, I say rich, it was pretty consistent um, across uh, those three miles per hour, but uh, I was surprised by that. I thought that four hole was gonna be uh, much better than that. The other one that kind of very surprised me and the one that I'm kind of the most impressed with is that uh, that uh, Spacer uh, by Polymer Racing Products. We are going to the dyno with that pretty soon. So going to the dyno because I want to test that at wide open throttle. The owner of that company that sent these to me, uh, that was the agreement that we made that I was going to do a dyno test on it. And I'm eager to do that with that intake manifold and that setup. We will probably do that with the 650 VRS on there just to make sure we got uh, enough fueling for it. But uh, uh, that spacer, uh, regardless of checking the AFR, I drove these around for a little bit of time. Uh, and I will tell you that the throttle response on that uh, four hole spacer and the one inch was very good. Now, maybe this uh, wood laminate one, if it was one inch, would have been... Uh, just as good. I don't know. Uh, we also had it was a half inch, so I figured we'd test it. But 
very impressed with that polymer racing products. Another video on that coming very, very soon when we do the dyno test on it. Can't wait to get to there. So that was one of the big, biggest things that surprised me. The other side of that is that, that two inch spacer that's on there, obviously that is really geared towards around wide open throttle. But again, I was surprised at how uh, dramatically that, that, uh, that the uh, uh, fueling stepped up, that we went that rich with it. Um, again, I didn't touch anything with a carburetor. It's still the calibration that's in there. Maybe you could tune out of that a little bit more, and I'm sure you could. But what I did lose, what I can't measure, is it did lose some low-end torque just driving around. Uh, I did cruise these, like I say, for a little bit of time, and that definitely lost the low end. I also, uh, because I was out screwing around with all of these, at wide open throttle, the one inch spacers maintain that 12.5 that we kind of set that carburetor at uh, quite a long time ago. 12.5, 12.6, is where I was at wide open throttle. That two inch spacer went dead, dead rich at 10.0. Uh, I even saw a few that were under 10, 9.5, 9.8, somewhere in there. So again, I believe it's because of the signal and the amount of airflow uh, that that is flowing it is probably metering more fuel and uh, the carburetor's not uh, able to keep up with the air side of it. So kind of a cool deal. Um, that's probably, again, the other biggest thing that I learned on that was that two inch spacer. So yeah, there, there was some, definitely some cool stuff we, we picked up out of this and I'm completely stoked. I know this type of video isn't gonna get a lot of views, but what it did tell me is it confirms some information on how I recommend spacers to people, and it should give you some information as to what will be better for your application. And if not, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to help you uh, figure out what's the best one for you. So yeah, I had a total blast with this one. Again, it was just a lot of fun. I learned a lot, and um, yeah, it gave me some empirical data to work on instead of just uh, guessing and honestly looking at the uh, you know, frame by frame stuff on the AFR was kind of cool. And anytime we can learn something, it's a good day. So anyway, if you got any questions on this one, don't hesitate, leave them down below. Uh, I'll be happy to help you with a selection on Spacer for you. Uh, if you want to try some different things on your side, but uh, yeah, that was a good deal. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.